Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Yeah, I do. And what do you think of him? I don't think he's the voice for men, but I, I certainly get his point though. I think he's a bit of an actor really. He's a bit of a attention seeker. I do like him, I do like what he says, because I do believe that he's encouraging uh, the new generation to uh, uplift and uh, take responsibility and move forward in life. But when he talks about women, I just think, oh no. No, what on earth? A voice for men? No, not at all. Maybe if you're like stuck in the like 19th century, yeah, but right now, no, definitely not. Um, he's terrible. He's not liberal. He's not forward thinking. Women have a voice. Women have power. Women everywhere. We love you. Feminism everywhere. He can be a voice for some men. Yeah, potentially. There's so many things that he talks on that I think uh, are quite important, yeah. So you think that it's okay for the younger generation to be listening to him and learning from him? Yeah. Schools across the UK started encountering increasing numbers of parents worried about the influence of Andrew Tate and pupils who admire him. Schools across the UK are in crisis as the effects of online influencer Andrew Tate's vile misogyny infiltrates our classrooms and society. The former kickboxer has been banned from TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube for his misogynistic comments. But fan channels have filled in the gaps, posting videos that reach millions of views. Content posted under the hashtag Andrew Tate has been viewed billions of times. Do you guys know who Andrew Tate is? Yeah. Do you like him? Yeah. He is currently in police custody in Romania on charges of organised crime, human trafficking and rape. Tate denies any wrongdoing. With increasing numbers of young children now consuming information from social media, his ideologies have been the point of discussion in schools, leading to playground arguments and other increasing incidents around misogyny. One school in West London, who wants to remain anonymous, felt that a whole school assembly was necessary and enforced a ban on two words, Andrew Tate. Another school sent out a letter to parents and introduced the topic during lessons on a PowerPoint presentation. Michael Conroy, who is the founder of Men at Work, trains school staff on talking to boys about these issues. He said since the start of the school year, every training session has mentioned concerns about Andrew Tate. My advice to schools would be and is, let's look at the issues, the values and the beliefs rather than the individual, because focusing on the individual can be counterproductive. Um, he is an interesting case study, but what he says has been said a billion times before. Do you believe that you can compete with the mass amount of misogynistic content online, uh, whether it was Tate or someone else? We have to talk about the issues, because issues like misogyny, they have real world impact that they they translate into rape, they translate into coercive control, they translate into sexual assault. They matter. We have to talk about them in ways that we've never done before. But we have to do that in a smart way that doesn't lionise people like him. Why do you think young boys are so desperate for some sort of connection? Um, I think that's a really good and a really important question because it that certainly plays out that girls are not his target audience. I think a lot of boys and young men are starved of connection, of meaningful connection, and it certainly gets beaten out of us as we grow into, into adulthood. I said that if a woman is going out with a man, she belongs to that man, that's his woman, so if she wants to do OnlyFans, she owes him some money because she's his. The influencer plays into the idea that men can treat women how they please. As he once said, they are a man's property. He has also previously said that women should bear responsibility for being sexually assaulted and that they belong in the home. He has often defended his past comments and has never been shy about his sexist views. A lot of misogyny is just realism. Mm. You know, like if, if you're a realist, then to some degree you're going to be a sexist. While most men who I spoke to disagreed with Tate's opinions, there were others who strongly believe in what he stands for. One man told me that Tate should be protected at all costs, but did not want to feature in this film. St. Dunstan's College in Catford have created their own lesson plans to ensure his misogynistic views do not go unchallenged, 
after parents raised concerns about his influence. It was a few years ago that we felt really that the kind of traditional construct around what a curriculum looks like wasn't really fit for purpose and that just having a very traditional knowledge rich curriculum wasn't enough for these young people in the space they were living in and in particular we felt that some of the pressures and challenges that they were seeing and, and living through online weren't being responded to effectively in schools. So we came up with our own curriculum, we give an hour a week of teaching to this where we look at all sorts of issues that affect young people today in the now um, and those include issues of gender stereotyping, of, of what toxic masculinity is, we look at uh, pressures around conflict resolution, around financial health um, and, and all sorts of other things as well. So it's a, it's a kind of bespoke course that speaks to those elements of education that are, we feel otherwise missing. So I hadn't heard of Andrew Tate at all until one of our parents uh, contacted us here at, at St Dunstan's and, and alerted us to the influence that they felt uh, this man was having on their child and so that was the point at which we started to really look into it and think actually we should be responding to this through our teaching. Stories like Tate's demonstrate just how successfully social media and its algorithms can promote controversial and hateful narratives. I think we have to move the story on when we're working in particular with adolescent boys from this is what you should not think, this is what you should not do, this is wrong, this is, this is the wrong part of what masculine identity is. We've got to move that on to this is, this is a definition of masculinity that we can all be proud of. And I don't think we've reached that point yet in our national story. And I think there is a real void and there's a risk that, you know, Andrew Tate Mark II or uh, whoever else will follow him will just fill that void unless we deal with that very real issue. Where are the manifestations of masc positive masculinity in our society and how do we use those positive images to help guide young boys in particular to be comfortable with their masculinity, be proud of their masculinity and to, to root it around a value system that we can all get behind and align with. Having spoken to various people, it's clear that perceived inclusivity was part of the wider problem where a lot of men don't feel like they have masculine role models who they can look up to or more importantly, the influence of the feminist Me Too movement has some men needing to find their voice in the gender equality conversation. Yesterday, by the standards of today. No!